Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. What I'd like to talk about this time is Schwartz's value theory. And as I discuss the various elements of this theory, I'd like to keep in the back of your mind that although this is great information that we can apply to our everyday lives, uh, really we want to think of it in the context of how these sorts of challenges and conflicts of values play out in the workplace and how as managers we have to be aware of them uh, in order to do the best possible job. Now, Schwartz's value theory basically states that there are 10 broad values that guide our individual behavior. And this model, as you see, can tell us which values are complementary uh, and in alignment and which values are in opposition. Now, this is important because if values are in alignment or in opposition, um, we're going to have uh, cognitive dissonance. We're going to have tension within a given individual. Uh, when things align up just fine, then there isn't any of that tension, no cognitive dissonance. Our values line up with the values that we're seeing in the workplace, in other words. But when values are in opposition, um, we find that then we really do have conflict and we have to be able to identify it when we see it. And, and if we understand it, it helps us to come up with the right type of managerial approach to deal with it. Um, values that are in opposition cause us to have this cognitive dissonance. And this certainly is a tension creating uh, influence. The idea is that values that are adjacent to each other are positively related. Um, but values farther apart from each other in this model may be in conflict and are not positively related. So obviously uh, values like say for instance, self-direction and power, which we could see here, uh, are much less related than values like self-direction and universalism, which are adjacent to each other. Now, these motivational forces are really what drives any given value, and it makes them influence our personality, and in particular, our behavior. So if, if we have values that are in opposition with each other in the workplace, um, it's likely we're gonna have some types of conflict. For example, you could see the value of power is driven mainly by reliance on authority and obtaining wealth. Well, this value will cause us to act in certain ways socially. And so this graphic has a little more information in it than the one in our text. Uh, in particular, you can see the four categories in general on the outside of the pie chart. Um, and, and really that this gives us a way to to understand that uh, these values that are adjacent to each other um, really are complementary in that sense and so forth. So self-transcendence, for, uh, for example, is about caring for others and uh, it's not about self. So we have the 10 broad values that guide our behavior. The values that are adjacent in the model are positively related and complement each other in alignment, we would say. And then values farther apart or completely opposite each other uh, may be in conflict and don't have a positive relationship. So here's a deeper way to take a look at these values and the actual motives that drive these values. The information shows us how the powerful motivational forces drive specific values and then of course our subsequent behavior. For instance, Power, again, is motivated primarily by the desire for authority and wealth. But in turn, this is driven by behavior to increase one's social power. So this is what we see played out in the workplace as behaviors. Similarly, universalism is driven by uh, motivations to improve, to respect others, to promote social justice and so forth. And as the previous pie chart showed uh, of the model, it is actually the opposite of individual achieving, which is driven by personal success. So achievement is related to ambition and demonstrating social competence. And as you can see here, we have enough detail to take a look at any one of these different values and the various motives that influence those values strongly. Okay, folks, that's all I wanted to talk about this time. I'll talk to you again soon.